Hello! Hello everybody and welcome back. So today this uh, prompt is hat, which I have actually not sketched in because I was really Hi. puzzling it over. And we're gonna back the music up just a touch. Oh, the volume is fairly low. You have to let me know how well you can hear me over the music. I think it's fine. I think it's just my inline mic is a little high right now. I'm just double checking audio levels. And it looks like I'm pretty well above the music, so this should be a decent volume for us. Um, so yeah, um, I was really puzzling out this hat. Originally I was thinking maybe I would just put the March Hare in a hat and that way there's a, a secondary top hat in this scene. But I kept thinking it over and it just felt wrong to, to just shoehorn more around this area because the tea party is still, like there's still so much to develop over there. So we're going to have other elements as far as, um, you know, I, I'd like to include some jam over here with the Dormouse. There's the teapot that's already sketched in. There's also other indications for a birthday. So I was thinking maybe a, a kind of a, an elaborate cake. And what else do we have over here? We also have the the March Hare, who will probably go right around here. I also need to fit the Tweedles and the Talking Flowers and the Dodo Bird. And those are generally all going on this side. So I'm kind of feeling like composition is getting pretty cramped over here but there's actually going to be at the moment with with my general uh, layout there's kind of a, a bit of dead space over here so I'm planning on including the Jabberwock up on the tower uh, this will be the uh, croquet field uh, next to the hedge maze I'm going to include some roses on the the hedge maze so there's more dotted around because the queen really liked roses. I don't want to have just the uh, the initial idea that I had for including some here down in the corner. Uh, these will make great stickers because I'll be able to put a bit more detail in them, kind of like I did with this anemone down here. But this right now is kind of a dead space because originally I was going to have the executioner area here, but I decided to move it back into the woods. And now we have this space, which doesn't have any plans other than some of the rose vine will, will come, maybe will come out this far. So I'm thinking as far as interesting for, you know, story-wise, you have the, uh, the queen, you know, yelling off with their heads, of course. Uh, we have this executioner here. The knave of hearts is still going to be somewhere in this area. I was thinking maybe just a lone hat just laying down on the ground where, you know, maybe its owner isn't around anymore because, well, that's kind of the queen's thing. She lops people's heads off and uh, kind of don't need a hat if you don't have a head. <laughs> so <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, it's pretty grim. Um, at the moment, let's see, other characters. So, Nave of Hearts will be go somewhere around here. I don't know if he'll be on the block yet. Kind of leaving that open. But, uh, we'll have a frog footman over here by the queen. Uh, the roses. And a flamingo up this way. So, that's kind of it. So, that leaves us with this big open space here. And I feel like just a random stray hat kind of kind of add something to the story. So hopefully my lighting is pretty good today. I have a shadow cast by my phone stand. Um, normally I would have that on and assisting me with being just a secondary screen so I don't have to keep checking on my uh, laptop as far as what's going on in Twitch. I do try to, to keep up with comments so if you have questions, concerns, anything, please feel free to comment. And in speaking of, I will jump over to Twitch for a moment and we'll see if anybody's on. Hmm. 
Alright, so our stream seems to be going good. The, um, the bitrate was a little bit glitchy yesterday, so uh, yesterday's stream actually wound up in three pieces, which I don't love. <laughs> Especially because um, with my tier of Twitch membership, uh, I'm not able to upload full videos. I thought I was going to be able to, and I found out after the stream that that was not going to be the case. So if it's a lot more easier, uh, if it's uh, English, if, if it's easier for you, uh, feel free to join me on my YouTube channel. It's still Red Persephone Art, same name. And over there, you can see all of the day 11 stream. It's all listed as one video because uh, I go from a streaming software that saves a copy of the video. So while I'm streaming. So I really like that because it is quite convenient. Uh, as far as this top hat, I don't know why I'm, I'm very much so geared towards a top hat, but you know what? Let's see. Sorry, tap my mic here by by accident. I'm thinking. I don't want to go with anything very modern. Um, so like baseball hats are out, trucker caps are out. Um, but I'm thinking maybe something like, um. A paperboy hat. We'll go ahead and take a look for that. No, I'm just doing a general image search just as far as ideas for how it would look. I feel like, even though I, I love the style of paperboy hats, I feel like visually it wouldn't be very interesting on its side or upside down. Uh, also called a newsboy cap. It is actually my my personal favorite style of hat currently when I uh, when I do bother to wear a hat outside. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not feeling that because it is a, a soft-sided hat. It's not going to have a lot of a lot where it's going to be visually understood what it is immediately. I feel like that would be something that people could puzzle out, but that's not where I'm going for with this type of illustration. I want things to be recognized fairly easily. So I think I will lean towards the top hat. Um, I suppose with some of the 18th century influence that I have for this Dormouse, I could probably do a, uh, like a tricorn. But most of the leanings for Wonderland are Victorian-ish, uh, at least with, with Alice's elements. Uh, the rest of the characters in Wonderland is kind of a an interesting mishmash. So working on that, uh, we have my my daughter gaming in the background, so you may hear her occasionally. I did try to adjust the noise suppression on my mic, so that way you're not picking up too much of that. So it's all relative. <laughs> Alright, so just double checking that my light is not being cranky, which it doesn't seem to be. And I think I am grabbing the readers once again. So, um, normally I do go ahead and give myself some prep time ahead uh, when doing these streams, so at least I've kind of re-immersed myself into the world, but this hat was kind of like that key. I didn't know that that was what I was going to have, where I was going to place it, things like that. So I just puttered around with other details, um, went ahead and erased a little bit of line work here and there. I went ahead and got a ruler out to go ahead and fix some of my, my perspective lines here. 
which is still a work in progress. I, I have some of these lines are sharpened up so they're nice and straight, but I still need to add the horizontal lines for the checkerboard. So, minor adjustments there. And I have a fuzzy, which my thing about fuzzies is get them off the page when you notice them. I did also add a couple layers to really some subtle glazes um, to the, the bottle for Alice. Because I want to make sure that when I do go to erase the the eraser lines here, that I'm not losing the the overall shape of the bottle on these lighter areas. I didn't do any line work, um, not line work, any brush work in the original stream. So lots of little things. Uh, so as far as today, I'm going to start zooming in a bit around here. That way we have some a bit of zoom. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to shoot for an area over here to be the focus and my autofocus wants to skip around. Oh, I hate when you do that. I, I think once I have the uh, basic shape of the hat down, I think we'll be alright. So, start off with... Yeah. It's probably as big as I can go for an opening for this being this far into the frame. I'm kind of feeling it out as far as scale to the queen. Because I didn't do any characters with... Well, oh, that's not a, that's not correct. The, the Mad Hatter's head is definitely a little, little bit oversized. And in general, I, I avoided oversizing. So we're actually going to have that be the brim of the hat instead of the inside. And then I'll adjust it to go ahead and turn up the edges of the brim in just a moment here. I am doing kind of a uh, like a flared top to these top hats. You know, it's not realistic to how they normally are, except for in portrayals of Wonderland and I guess cartoons. It's like that. Sometimes the the top edge here would be flared out more than it is at the base, but in reality, they're they're generally pretty pretty flat at least, not curving up and out. So I'm um, uh, being somewhere between gentle with the flare and a little bit curving with the flare. I'm kind of kind of all over the place. I feel like that angle is is not right. That angle is not right. Alright, we can redo that. The silliness that I deal with. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes feeling uh, I'm, I'm just feeling so distracted and not focusing as much as I would hope. I tend to do better once I'm painting smaller details. I'm gonna curve the brim a little bit this time. Um, subtly have that round. No, I don't like that angle either. I feel like it's too small for the composition now. I'm trying to think of how the hat would kind of roll around if uh, if it just fell off of somebody's head. So just as a reference point, I'll go ahead and turn this just a touch so I can go ahead and lay down a little flat spot for our ground here 
something that'll help me with uh, picturing the plane of, of where this hat has okay, fallen. Oh, we're getting somewhere. It was helpful for me to go ahead and basically rough that out as if it were a cylinder. I'm able to see where the band of the hat should be. I have the brim really curved up a bit. And then just putting in the inside details of the hat. And I am almost completely off of frame. Let's slide that over. So I think there's enough there where that should read as a hat. And just sitting there, actually, with where our light source is, this section where I kind of dictated where the ground would be. Uh, plausibly could be a shadow. It's probably a little long. I haven't decided time of day, which is why I haven't put any shadows in other than shaping to, to inform the, the the form of objects, not actually this is an accurate shadow for where this is. It's just, in general, here's a light source. I haven't dictated that uh, as probably as full as I should, but that's okay. Because this is an illustration, physics get a little wacky in Wonderland. And something that I already knew I was going to break perspective because I don't want everything to be that strict. And also, ultimately, this will be both a print as well as a sticker sheet. So that's why a lot of my my usage, like uh, here on the table, especially. Uh, a lot of things are not accurate to perspective. Uh, we should actually be seeing more so the top of the teacups, top of the teapot, things like that uh, from this angle. I don't want to, to turn those too far because I feel like they won't be as interesting visually for stickers. Like it would work fine for just an illustration but not for its full uses, so I'm trying to keep that balance in check. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, so we have this weird discarded hat just in the middle of nowhere, and I think that even though we still don't have a whole lot of detail over on this side, I think that makes this side a bit more interesting story-wise. So this hat is a a, just a tiny piece. Uh, let's see, I think... Is my playlist over already? I did notice that today's playlist that I had grabbed is a bit more brief than some of the other ones have been. So uh, we have a comment that uh, says, I think with so many different pieces, if they're all going to share one light source, which makes sense to the eye, then it doesn't necessarily need to be any time of day per se, but rather an arbitrary location where the light source is here, right? And generally that is what I'm going with. But as far as cast shadows, 
uh, during different times of day, uh, the shadow length will be will vary. So that's why I'm not putting in a lot of shadows yet because I want to give that consideration when I, I go in to do that part. So generally it's just, okay, the light source is way over here, which hopefully that's still going. My bitrate's a little, a little bit dodgy at the moment. Hopefully this is all coming through. Uh, so we'll, we'll actually go ahead and back out of the zoom. So yeah, the just having a, an arbitrary light source that's somewhere up here. Um, so that's going to help dictate how far shadows are thrown. And that actually looks about right now, for the moment. Give that more thought when I'm getting closer to like polishing up the last details. Um, let's see here, once I have... Um, actually looking at the prompts, I'm still going to be putting in main characters, I mean, characters in general, up until the 25th is the March Hare, the 27th is the Frog Footman. So those are actually going pretty deep into this month. I'm going to have to start blocking in some of the, uh, some more of the background than I have been. I was thinking I would do maybe like a uh, just a random wash with some some paint splatter just to add a little bit more interest to the background scenery. So I'm going to have to uh, step up my putting in little bits of details um, so that way I can go ahead and do that before too much of this is set. The main thing that I want to do is know where faces are. Uh, so I need to to get ahead on my my pencil work so I can go ahead and uh, I'm not going to do masking fluid. I'm probably just going to rip up a couple like small scraps of paper so that way they're protected when I do those paint splatters because I don't want to try to rework a face with how small everything is in scale. And I had not gone back to the playlist. Instead, I got distracted by looking at Twitch. And yes, this playlist is done. All right, so let's find another one. There we go. I found one. It's called Cinematic Fantasy. That That sounds good. And I like to... Do a quick skim of the beats per minute to see if this is going to be annoying. And I don't think that'll be the case here. This one also seems kind of short. That's okay. I wish they, they gave a, a total time for the playlist. But they don't. Um, luckily the, the head itself is pretty small here. So we'll go ahead and... I think I'll do a pretty dry shadow first before I go ahead and start glazing in. So this is the Silver Sterling Studio Round 1. I'm going to go with a fairly small brush for these details. And this will be one of those few cases where, having talked about shadow so much, I actually feel pretty confident about this one. I think I've also been feeling like, after working on so many little spots of characters so far, that I really want to start blocking in more of the Wonderland itself. So, let's see, what do we want for color? While I'm debating that, I just realized I never went back in on the Hatter's headband. Add in wow. any indication. I, I have to! I have to! I have to! I have to! 
of these little lines. And this, these over here on the right side are acting as both folds as well as just a little bit of form. And I need to see where I'm at. Make sure that you are seeing some detail happening. So let's zoom back in. I'll show you the header's hat real quick where I added the uh, the Oxazine Violet, or Windsor Violet, depending on your brand, or in the case of Daniel Smith, it is Carbazol Violet. It's all PV23. But it doesn't matter what you want to say it is, that's what it is. Okay, we have our lone hat over here, slowly sliding the, uh, the board over a little bit. And give me just a moment here. I'll be right back. Everything seems to be good at this point. Great. So so far, I've just put in that little bit of shadow with some neutral tint, um, just because I'm still undecided about color. I don't know what it is. Uh, keep going back and forth on all the colors. Uh, I think maybe. Yeah, maybe I'll just do a, a reverse of the Mad Hatter's hat. We'll do the uh, dioxazine violet for the uh, the main color. Yeah, I kind of like that idea, but you know, maybe we'll go with a red sash. And just a quick double check to make sure I have enough water in this mix. So I do want to make sure the color is showing up as transparent. No, that's too dark. I need a little more water in my mix. And I want it to stand out for where it is, but... Man, oh, my brush is a little too wet. Or the hat band there. So, it looks like I destroyed the shape of that when I corrected this side. I'm just extending this edge just a tiny bit to go ahead and correct for that.
Alright, and while we go ahead and let that dry for just a sec, going ahead and hopping over. And I'm also a aiming bee. I'm also a aim bee. I'm also a aim bee. Alright, so looks like we're still going strong and we're good there. So basically, I'm just letting that hat settle okay. for just a few. Are you ready? Are you ready? Three, two, one, go! Go! It looks like the header's hat has dried down pretty well. I'm going to grab just a touch of the. Looks like Quinburn Orange with. Probably tiniest bit of Indanthrone blue. But I figure while we're waiting for that hat. I've never I haven't been happy with the color of this cake. First it was too tan, and then it was too yellow. I'm also a cheap booster. Let's go. Just dotting in just a touch of orange to go ahead and tone that color a little bit more towards baked goods. I believe. Oh. Two, one, yeah. Alright, and then for the hat band itself. I was leaning towards some red, but let's take a look at some other colors. So, grabbing our little random chunk of paper. And that's actually the color that I was using here on the cake. It's a uh, quinacridone coral on Daniel Smith. Um, M. Graham has that as their quinacridone pig uh, red pigment. I think it's a PR209. Mm, I'm not really feeling that for that. It's a little too... too pinkish for me at that strength. I don't know, I've done so many blues and greens and purples, I'm kind of... I want to make sure that everything's cohesive, but at the same time, I also want to make sure that everything is also visually interesting. And a discarded hat's probably not the most interesting thing, but I don't know. Kind of playing around with that. I do have some of the mix left over from the Mad Hatter's hat. That was with the Thalo Blue Turquoise, or Thalo Turquoise Blue. Still need to look it up. And, um,. Thalo green blue shade uh, and that gave me a really wonderful deep teal. I really like that color. It's actually I had a palette where I could pre-mix it. That's uh that's something I might actually do cuz I really like the, the value range. It was able to go pretty dark here. Um they did add just a touch of neutral tint in off camera. I'm just go ahead and deepen that a little bit further, but most of that is just that paint and the value was able to go pretty deep all right so since i'm stalling on this hat band i'm just gonna pop back over to our neutral tint i'm going to add the inside of the the hat here The cake was pretty dry when I dotted that on, so I'm not too worried about it. And most of the hat should be pretty dry where this is not going to run. So 
this is kind of a uh, an odd soundtrack to have. I have this great like orchestral dramatic oh. music, and I'm sitting here painting a hat. It's just sitting in the middle of nowhere. So it's, uh, it's actually kind of funny. I don't know if any of you guys have, have listened to something that was like overly dramatic when you're doing like household chores or something, but you know if you really want to go there, um, go ahead and give like the Mission Impossible soundtrack a uh, at least the theme. Go ahead and give that a listen while you're doing housework. It's kind of it's kind of funny. At the very least, you know, you can't amuse yourself. What can you do? Uh, let's see. A lot of purples and greens. Like, those are a good pair. Um, purple and blue is a good pair. Purple and red's a good pair. Purple and yellow, even. Uh, that would be a, a good pop because they're complementary colors, but I also don't want to go that bright. It's one of those... I want it to be present enough that you see it. But it's not a main character, so I'm kind of... that That's where the fight is, as far as deciding this hat band. So maybe I should go with something a little more complimentary and go with a... Maybe a blue. I think I have... Some of that thalo blue-red shade. Maybe we'll go there. is a bit of a vibrant blue though. Alright, so instead I've grabbed some of my Indanthrone blue. It's kind of like if you had a French ultramarine and or, or just ultramarine in general. But it's, it's like a muted value of it. And I watered down that wash a little much. I went with a uh, fairly dry strength on the brush. I blotted most of it off. I'm just adjusting the edges of this hat band because initially I didn't have the band being out quite as wide as the hat is. Which doesn't really work for a hat band. Hat band's wrapped around it. You know, definitely need to do another wash on the hat itself. Which right now it looks flat. Even though I added the shading on the one side here. It's not quite enough. We'll go in with a touch more of the dioxazine. Because this. I'm trying to think, do I want to add just a teeniest bit of shading there? Okay. Come down here, where the shadow is. I'm actually going to bridge across where the Indanthrone is. It's a really dry mix. I'm just pulling that up. One of the reasons I do like Carbazole Violet so much is it's a great shadow color. I do also want to increase the value on this side as well, since there's really going to be almost no light on this side. Alright. 
So I think we got that to a decent depth. And I probably could have zoomed that in a bit more. We're gonna go ahead and do that now. And that way I can get you down in there. I'm going to move the ISO up a little bit more to make this even brighter. Just to see if that helps you pick out the detail a little bit better. And kind of overexposes the rest of the, the work, but you'll be able to see detail a bit better. So we just have this random top hat. And I could definitely push the value a little further. So we'll go ahead and do that in just a moment here. I'm going to try to keep that right there. And I'm going to hope that now that I do have an object right there on the frame, that the autofocus will stay put. And my batteries decided to jump from we're okay to we're going to warn you that we're low already. So still in with the Robosol Violet. Just nudging these shadows a little bit deeper. Um now I'll be a bomb. Now I'll be a bomb. And then we'll actually go back on with the uh the indent throne to actually. I grabbed a random puddle of blue it's sitting over here. It's probably some of the uh, Thalo blue red shade and the Thalo blue turquoise. And instead of darkening our shadow, I'm going to brighten the main part of the hat band. I'm kind of going the other way around instead of... Keeping the value. Just adding a glance to the whole thing. Yeah, I like that a bit more. I like the Indanthrone on its own. It's a, a wonderful, like, deep, inky blue. But realizing after putting some glazing in, that needed a little bit more color. I'll actually back up and I'll show you the Indanthrone. I basically used that just full strength on the blue for Alice's dress. And hopefully yes, it's in frame well enough. I still have to do her face. So working on her face and the Hatter's face. I don't know why. Um, some of the faces were just kind of escaping me so far. Uh, the only face that I have other than the a vague idea for the caterpillar. Uh, you don't even see the uh, the executioner's face with the uh, the card guard, but Alice is a uh, not Alice. Uh, Wonderland is a a strange and fun place. I'm going to back off that ISO now that we're zoomed out, so you can see the rest of the piece pretty easily. And as far as thumbnails, that's probably my <laughs> my least interesting thumbnail that's going to happen for these this series of videos. But that's all right. We we make it work. Well, I kind of feel like that's really all we have for today. I could putter around some of the other details. Um, with the, um, uh, the woods back here is where the Cheshire Cat will be. I do have mixed feelings about having him so far back in the composition because he's another favorite character. We do have the, the Caterpillar and Alice pretty small on this page too, so... Uh, juggling that a bit. I've 
I feel like once we have a couple more days under us, like, uh, for the flamingo, that's in two days. And uh, tomorrow's the teapot. Although, I feel like we've had a lot of simple elements lately. Um, at, at least for this week. So I'm thinking I'll get more of the, the setting nailed down. Um, that way we, I can go ahead and do that that random splash of color to to go ahead and work around and, and see what happens when I don't help that. I kind of think that's what Wonderland needs right now, is just a little bit more of the randomness and chaos, even though how I'm shoehorning these elements together is kind of randomness and chaos. <laughs> That shadow is distracting from my phone. I'm gonna move that over here. Sorry about the squeak. As I move that, it's got those little non-stick feet. But anyway, you can get a good look at Wonderland before we're off for today. Alright, and we are zoomed all the way out. I think Wonderland's coming along pretty well, and I'm definitely looking forward to laying down some more color. So we'll see where I get to for tomorrow. Tomorrow is the teapot. I may actually resketch that on the table because I want to fit a couple more of the elements for birthday there because that is coming up for the 19th. And I want to make sure that this tea party does seem to be a birthday celebration, uh, more so than just the hatter standing here holding a slice of cake. So, we'll go ahead and get on that. And as always, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great night. And keep painting.